Welcome to Jim Hill's annual Veterans Day program for 2018. I'm Cadet Major Osha Love Lowry, the personnel officer for the Mighty Tiger Battalion. I'm a senior here at Jim Hill High School and I will be your mistress of ceremony. I'm Cadet Major Jaquela Marzetti, the executive officer for the battalion. I'm also a senior here at Jim Hill High School and I will also be your mistress of ceremony. At this time, we would like everyone to stand for honoring our colors in the national anthem, which will be played by our outstanding band. Our color guard is commanded by Cadet Major Harrison DeMyers, who will also lead us in the pledge. And the cadet career will be led by personal officer Cadet Major Osha Love Lari. I would like to ask that all non-JRTC cadets please take your seat. Cadets, please assist me in reciting the cadet creed. I am an Army Junior ROTC cadet. I will always connect myself to bring credit to my family, country, school, and course of cadets. I am loyal and patriotic. I am the future of the United States of America. I do not lie, cheat, or steal. I will always be accountable for my actions and deeds. I will always practice citizenship and patriotism. I will work hard to improve my mind and strengthen my body. I will seek the mantle of leadership and stand prepared to uphold the Constitution in every way of life. May God give me strength to always live by this creed. Thank you. Please be seated. Next, let's welcome our superb band and choir, who will bring a few selections, and afterwards, they will be followed by Cadet Major Renicia Anderson, who will be giving the history of Veterans Day. <laughs>
Bernicia Anderson, the training officer of the Tiger Battalion. I am a senior and I will be giving you the history of Veterans Day. World War I, also known as the Great War, was officially concluded on the 11th hour of the 11th day of November in 1918. On November 11th of the following year, President Woodrow Wilson declared that day as Armistice Day in honor of peace. The first celebration using the term Veterans Day occurred in Birmingham, Alabama in 1947. In 1954, Congress passed the bill that President Eisenhower signed proclaiming November 11th to be Veterans Day. Today, Veterans Day is still observed on November 11th as a national holiday to honor all veterans of the United States Armed Forces. I am Cadet Captain Joe Shea Hayes, the S2 for the battalion. I am also a senior, and this is the history of our fallen comrades. You may have noticed the small table set for one that is off on its own. It is reserved to honor our fallen comrades in arms. This symbolizes that they are with us here in spirit. We should never forget the brave men and women who answered our nation's call and served the cause of freedom in a special way. We are ever mindful that the sweetness of enduring peace has always been tainted by the bitterness of personal sacrifice. We are compelled to never forget that while we enjoy our daily pleasures, there are others who have endured the agonies of pain, deprivation, and death. The table is round to show our everlasting concern for our fallen comrades. The tablecloth is white, symbolizing the purity of their motives when answering the call to duty. The single red rose displayed in a vase reminds us of the life of each of our fallen comrades and the loved ones and friends of these comrades who keep the faith. The vase is tied with a red ribbon, symbol of our continued determination to remember our fallen comrades. A slice of lemon on the bread plate is to remind us of the bitter fate of those who will never return. A pinch of salt symbolizes the tears we endured by the families of those who have sacrificed all. The holy book represents the strength gained through faith to sustain those lost from our country. The glass is inverted. They cannot toast with us at this time. The chair is empty because they are no longer with us. Let us remember and never forget their sacrifice. May they and their families ever be washed over and protected. I am Cadet Lieutenant Colonel Brianna Gunn, the battalion commander. I am a senior and I am truly elated to introduce our guest speaker, Major General Retire Augustus L. Collins. Major General Retire Augustus L. Collins is the Chief Executive Officer for Minnick Incorporated. Prior to accepting this position, General Collins was the General of Mississippi and served as the Commanding General of both the Mississippi Army and the Air National Guard. General Collins served on active duty in Operation I Desert Shield Storm, as well as commanded the 155th Armed Brigade Combat Team during the combat operation Iraqi Freedom from 2004 to 2006. General Collins was promoted to Brigadier General on May 10, 2005, while in Iraq, making him the first African American to attain the rank of General Officer in the history of Mississippi National Guard. Please welcome our guest speaker, Major General Retired Augustus L. Collins. We are blessed to live in the absolute best country on the face of this earth. And I can say that from experience. I've, I've had the opportunity to travel literally around the world. And that opportunity was afforded me because I made a decision to wear a uniform to protect and defend my country. But as I have traveled around the world and gone to different countries and experienced different cultures, I always compare that to my country, to the United States of America. And I got to tell you, even though we have our own problems here in this country, we are still the best country. There's no comparison when you try to, to look at what we have here in the United States and what is afforded men and women in other countries around the world. So uh, for that, I am extremely uh, happy and proud to be a citizen of this country. It's great because some, some very smart men, many, many years ago, decided that we needed to be a nation that stood on our own two feet. We need to be a nation that, that, that developed our own laws, and we were a nation that ruled ourselves. Now, that idea has been around for 243 years, and it's because of that idea that many men and women have raised their right hand, they've signed their name, and they made a promise before God and in the presence of men that they will protect and defend this great country of ours. It's that idea that soldiers, sailors, airmen, marine, coast guardsmen, have laid down their lives at certain times on the mantle of freedom to protect that idea and to provide an opportunity for you and I and our families to live, work, and play in a free society. It's because of that idea that we have the opportunity to go and worship the religion of our choice. That idea gives us the right 
to vote for the candidate of our choice. It's an idea that gives us the, the opportunity to freely express ourselves, freedom of speech, freedom of expression. It's the idea that all men and women are created equal. Whatever you choose to do in life, the door is open. All you got to do is make sure you don't close that door. And it's been, that door has been opened because of people who have bled and died. Men and women that we call veterans have made sure that, that door will be open for you when it came your time to walk through it. And I'm honored to stand here before you today and say to those who are in attendance, those veterans, thank you. At the 11th hour, on the 11th day of this 11th month, pause and you remember those, those who fought, those who died, those who continue to serve, and those who are prepared to give themselves for you. I'm Cadet Command Sergeant Major Zachary Roberts. I'm the Command Sergeant Major for the Tiger Battalion, and I'm a senior here at Jim Hill High School. Who are veterans? Veterans are men and women who, for many reasons, don the uniform of our country to stand between freedom and dictatorship to take up the sword of justice in defense of the liberties we hold dear, to preserve peace and to calm the winds of war. The title veteran must be earned. It is a title endowed by a grateful nation on citizens whose shoulders were broad enough to carry the weight of our common defense. It is a title that speaks of courage and sacrifice in the face of mortal danger. It is a title that speaks of compassion and heartbreak in the wake of the terrible cost of war. And it is a title that speaks of love of country and of a belief in America's goodness and our strength. But as much as they may differ by gender, race, age, national origin, or profession, they share a common love for our great nation, a love great enough to put their very lives on the line, to guarantee you the way of life we enjoy today, and to secure that way of life for tomorrow's generations. Those who have served our nation in uniform are the best people our society has to offer. We owe them our full support and our sincerest thanks. America's veterans did not shrink from battle, they did not yield to fear, they did not abandon their cause. All too often they paid the ultimate price. By their example of courage under fire, they raised up a new nation inspired by the dignity of the common man, a nation blessed with heroes and heroes' dreams, our veterans. I'm Cadet Command Sergeant Major Fabian Hill. I'm a senior and I serve as the Brigade Command Sergeant Major, Jackson Public Schools. It is an honor to present you a ROTC cadet who has been nationally recognized for academics and leadership. Two junior ROTC cadets from the state of Mississippi have earned the Legion of Valor Bronze Star Award. The Legion of Valor Bronze Cross Award has been awarded to a cadet here at Jim Hill High School. In order to earn this award, you need to show outstanding military and academic excellence while enrolled in your junior ROTC program. They must be in the top 10% of the junior ROTC class and have demonstrated outstanding leadership and involvement in their school and community. They must also be recommended by the junior ROTC instructor and their high school principal. Only one Legion of Valor award is authorized for every 4,000 cadets in an Army Junior ROTC Brigade. This year, Army Cadet Command in Fort Knox, Kentucky selected 24 Army Junior ROTC cadets from over 313,000 cadets worldwide, and one of these cadets is from Jackson Public Schools. Cadet Colonel Reuben Banks, a senior at Jim Hill High School, is currently serving as the Brigade Commander for Jackson Public Schools. He is the senior ranking cadet over seven Army Jungle ROTC units and nearly 1,783 cadets. Cadet Banks is highly qualified for this award as he is truly an example of the whole person concept, which is a scholar, athlete, and leader. As a scholar, he is ranked in the top 10% of his senior class. Cadet Banks is poised and mature beyond his years with an unequal thirst for knowledge and increased responsibility. As an athlete, he is the captain of Jim Hill's cadet challenge team and was previously a member of the golf team. As a leader, he is a number one cadet out of 263 in the Jim Hill Junior ROTC program and the number one cadet out of 1,782 Junior ROTC cadets in the Jackson Public Schools. Cadet Banks exhibits nothing but excellence and has perseverance to the end to see attacks through. Cadet Banks also recently served as the governor of 2018 Mississippi Boys State at Ole Miss and was also selected to represent Mississippi and Washington, D.C. at Boys Nation. Cadet Banks has also served for the past four years as a member of the United States Air Force Auxiliary Civil Air Patrol, where he is a cadet commander, communications officer, medic, and an assistant ground team leader. Through his volunteer organization alone, he has over 250 hours 
of Community Service. Cadet Banks plans to attend the U.S. Air Force Academy and pursue a degree in mechanical engineering and will later apply for law school to become a military lawyer. Cadet Banks, your academic and leadership achievements are certainly worthy of celebration. Congratulations. He's been doing a lot of extra things. He's gone the extra mile. And that's the reason he's standing before us today on the stage holding that Legion of Valor. I have one of my coins that I want to present to him today for, and, and just to tell him how proud I am that we have someone from Mississippi and from Jackson to receive that award. Attention to all orders. The Legion of Valor Bronze Cross Achievement Award is presented to Reuben M. Banks for our standard achievement in the Reserve Officers Training Course Program on this day, November 7, 2018. Richard D. Wonky, Director of Awards, given under the hand in City of Washington, D.C. I'm Cadet Captain Korean April. I'm the S6 for the Mighty Tiger Battalion. We are at a place in our program where we pause to recognize our veterans who are with us today. Guest speaker, General Retired Augustus L. Collins. Ward 5 Council, Private First Class Charles Tillman, Army. JPS DAI Office, Colonel Paul Willis, Retired Army. Lieutenant Colonel Valerie Myers, Retired Army. Sergeant Major Clyde Smith, Retired Army. Sergeant First Class of Freedom Moody, Retired Army. Now I would acknowledge the Jim Hill faculty and staff. Lieutenant Colonel Raymond Leonard, Retired Army. Lieutenant Captain Sam Kersar, Navy. Mass Sergeant Michael Cook, Retired Army. Mass Sergeant Rebecca Corley, Retired Army. Private First Class Terry Bennett, Army. Jim Hill, Former Students. Major Joseph Mutes, Army. Second Lieutenant Travis Willis, Active Army. Second Lieutenant Brandon Watkins, Active Army. Sergeant Preston Fowler, Active Army. Sergeant Jessica Bell, Active Army. Sergeant Timothy Geis, Active Army National Guard. Sergeant Christopher Hubbard, Active Army National Guard. Specialist E4 Janelle Lee, Active Army. Specialist E4 Terrence Jones, Active Army National Guard. Private First Class Eronisha Banks, Active Army Reserves. Private Jaquan Walker, Active Army National Guard. Private Henry Sampson, Active Army National Guard. Private Second Class Takaya Holt, Active Army National Guard. Private Second Class Davion Young, Active Army Reserves. Private Eric Hall, Active Army National Guard. Now I will acknowledge family and friends. Lieutenant Commander Deborah Luckett, Day Retired Army. Lieutenant Wilton C. Jackson, Active Army. Lieutenant Donald Young, Active Army. Major Larry McMillian, Retired Army. Major Frank Branch, Retired Army. Captain Wheeler Washington, Army. Sergeant Major Roger Howard, Active Army. Sergeant Major Clarence Andrews, Retired Air Force. Sergeant Major Michael Thompson, Retired Army. First Sergeant Ari Washington, Senior, Retired Army. Sergeant First Class Ari Washington, Junior, Retired Army. Sergeant First Class Preston Collins, Retired Army. Staff Sergeant Christopher L. Bruner, Active Army. Sergeant Julian Oliver, Active Army. Specialist E-4 Matthew Johnson, Active Army National Guard. Specialist E-4 Alvin White, Army National Guard. Lieutenant Colonel Calvin Osby, U.S. Army Retired. Let's give our veterans a hand because without them we would not have the freedom that we share today. On behalf of the Tiger Battalion Cadets, we would like to present you with uh, a token of our appreciation for those wise words that you uh, gave us today. I hope that everybody paid attention and that they can use these words that uh, General Collins talked about today and use it to put towards improving your life or doing something great in life. Thank you, sir. We would like to recognize Cadet Colonel Reuben Banks for receiving the Legion of Valor Burns Cross Achievement Award. Now, will you please stand for closing remarks from Dr. Mr. Kersaw in the playing of taps by the band. Uh, first off, I'd like to recognize all our visitors here today. We thank you for coming and being and participating in our program. I want to also thank a, our veterans but also to the spouses of our veterans as well, because they serve as well as our veterans serve. I want to congratulate Reuben Banks. I mean, he's one in a million right now, as you can see. But I know that our generation, knowing the seniors that are here at school and the young people that are here at school, the young men and women, are going to keep us safe. And they're going to go ahead and make sure that our country is going to remain free. Our future is well kept 
in strong hands. So I want to thank them as well.